Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, this video is a little different. It's not a hair video or a tutorial or anything. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about my first three months as a mom, as a new mom. Um, he is now six months. However, the first three months were a lot different than it is now. And I was pretty much debating on whether or not I should do this video because I don't want anything to be taken the wrong way or get misinterpreted. However, it is my truth and um, at the end of the day, if I could inspire anybody by telling my story or help them in any way, I am all for that. So, the first thing that I learned, right, is that no amount of advice or tips can prepare you for motherhood because quite frankly, is not a one-size-fit-all situation at all. Everybody's gonna experience something different, every baby is different, every mother is different, and what may have worked for you may not work for me and vice versa. So, when my son was born, of course I was overjoyed, I was happy, I was in love, I was pretty much incessant, uh, I was pretty much obsessed with my son like I barely wanted him to leave my side and um, if you watch my birthing story my birthing video you know I had him at home with a midwife so pretty much he's he was by my side from the time he was born but um, despite all of the great wonderful feelings that comes along with being a mother it was also very hard and it was hard mostly because I made it hard on myself one of the main mistakes I think I made was I leading up to before I gave birth I watched a lot of YouTube videos with new moms giving tips and tricks and took in a lot of advice and I took it serious I thought that I had to stick to it I had to do that and that's not the case not everything that people say you should do means that you should actually do it <laughs> so the first month of his life um, well fairly the first month of his life my mom left a few days before he turned on one month she was here and she was very helpful and I'm so grateful because I don't know what I would have done be with him. I don't know what I would have done without her because quite frankly I was scared okay I had my son and I was just like I am responsible for this life I am responsible for this human being and I cannot mess it up again being a new mom I had no prior experience with raising or taking care of a baby so I was so happy that my mother was here to help me and guide me and be that support that I needed however on the flip side um, I was very hard on myself there was a lot of tips and advice that I took very seriously and because I wasn't able to follow them I felt like I was failing as a mother you know put the baby on a schedule right away you put them on a schedule they'll be used to it and you'll have an easier time that didn't work for me I tried and it didn't work for me and because it wasn't working Again, I was hard on myself. Don't, don't co-sleep with him. Um, I don't have a nursery or a crib or anything. We actually only bought a bedside bassinet. He didn't really like to sleep in there. When he was a newborn, he didn't like to sleep in there at all, honestly. He would wake up a lot and end up in the bed with us. I felt guilty. Like I felt like I had to make him sleep in there. And on the flip side, I felt like I'd rather him 
be able to sleep so he's gonna sleep in the bed with me so it was like you know I was in a tug of war with myself and that took a toll on me as well set a routine it was like oh I read a lot babies love routine set a routine wake up at this time give him feed him at this time give him a bath at this time like make it a routine so that they always know what to expect that's not realistic I mean if you were able to do it that's great like honestly that's great but it's not realistic in the sense of that's gonna work for everybody and I didn't know that at the time at the time and again I was really hard on myself because it just wasn't working for me let him cry it out exercise his lungs this was this is one I really struggled with because in my opinion or from what I observe a baby is not crying just to cry they're crying for a reason what I, is because they hungry tired want attention wanting attention is a valid reason to cry they can't talk they can't verbally communicate with you so or whether they're um, uncomfortable uh, uncomfortable needs a diaper change whatever the case may be they're crying for a reason so this whole cry it let them cry it out thing I don't agree with it I don't agree with it now and he's six months I didn't agree with it back then however at the time I thought that I had to do it and it just didn't feel right I didn't like it so in my <laughs> Honestly, the whole exercise the lung thing, if that's the case, he could exercise his lungs when he's crying because I'm changing his pamper or if he's crying because I'm giving him a bath. You know, crying because I have to do something and ha he has no choice but to cry through it just because he doesn't like it. That's different than letting him cry it out for no reason. So that's another thing that like... I was at war with, with my, within myself. Then the whole don't spoil him. You know, you pick him up every time he cry or hold him too much or co sleep with him, you know, you're gonna spoil him. All of those things I was trying not to do because I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna spoil my son. I don't wanna ruin him. Like, I have to get this right. There was just a lot of don't do this or do that or don't do that or do this. Like, it was a lot. And I took all of that in very seriously and thought that I had to do it, I had to stick to it. And if I wasn't doing it, I was doing something wrong. That is the worst feeling to have as a new mother, to feel like everything you're doing is wrong. And although I didn't verbally talk about it or say it out loud, that's what I was feeling inside at the time. And I didn't have any support to help me combat that feeling because I wasn't communicating it with anybody. And because I wasn't communicating it with anybody and kept it all in, I swear I was on the verge of, of experiencing postpartum depression because there were days that I would just sit in bed and cry and cry and cry and I didn't know why I was crying. It was I was tired, exhausted. You know, the whole sleep when your baby sleep, that's a good, that's something good to do, however, Again, I was so obsessed with him that if he was sleeping, I would just be there. I would just be there laying down, watching him half of the time, like during the day. So the only time I would try to get rest is at night. And if he's having a bad night, again, I'm up with him. So now I'm sleep deprived, hard on myself, feeling like I'm doing things wrong. All of that took a toll on my body, and I was mentally, emotionally, and physically drained. Another thing is that I felt very insecure um, with my new mother body. <laughs> um, a lot of people were telling me, oh, you're going to snap right back as soon as you have that baby. Don't worry. I bet you're not even going to have to exercise. Like all of this, like throughout my entire pregnancy, this is what people are telling me. And, you know, that, that made me feel good. I was like, okay, that's great. So now... I have my child and I'm expecting to snap right back and I did because I lost everything except for my tummy <laughs> so I was feeling insecure about that because in my mind I'm supposed to lose this tummy right away you know and I can't like there are women out there that have their baby and literally the next day it looks like they they didn't even they weren't even pregnant there are women out there like that and 
that's their experience and that's their truth and that's great however I think it's very important to stop telling women or pregnant women that they're gonna snap back just because they were naturally small and petite because now you're getting into their head and if that doesn't happen once they have their child you have to keep in mind that the emotional damage that's doing to them because one you're already experiencing all this hormonal imbalance you already can't do x y and z because you have to heal from the inside my camera died so now i'm recording on my phone so bear with me so yeah so i'm struggling with accepting my new body and you know giving my body time to heal before i start trying to snap back fully and again i was hard on myself like emotionally i was just not there i didn't have the emotional support that i needed because i wasn't communicating how i was feeling to anyone not my fiance not anybody and that's my fault i could say that much however i was expecting especially my fiance to just know and that was wrong on my behalf because he can't read my mind but i was expecting him to just see that I needed him in a different way at this time in our life and it took I never actually talked to him about it and then I ended up being angry and very short-tempered and it took months before I actually opened up to him and we talked about it and it made our, our relationship even stronger but at the time it was so hard because I was dealing with all of these emotions by myself plus the things I had to deal with as a new mother. So there was a few things that like my son went through. First, <laughs> he had his first diaper rash a few days in. I blamed myself for it because I was like, what am I doing wrong? Am I not changing him enough? Like, what is it? Turns out that it had nothing to do with me not changing him enough because at that time, my son would literally nurse, shit, and I change him. Nurse, shit, and I change him. Like, it was a, it was like clockwork. It, it, every time he nursed, he shit. <laughs> so I would change him right after. And he was nursing almost every two hours or sometimes sooner or whatever. So um, I blame myself for that because he was fussy, uncomfortable. You know, if you ever dealt with a baby with a diaper rash, you know that they're not happy so you know there were times that he was up crying and I was crying with him and I just felt so bad I took him to the pediatrician <laughs> yeah for that barrage and you know he just explained to me that you know maybe try changing the, the brand of diapers but it turns out that was the problem it was the brand of diapers that we were using and again I blame myself for that because initially I wanted to use clot diapers but at the time, you know, clot diaper in the initial investment is big, although it's cheaper in the long run, it is an initial expensive investment and I couldn't do it, we couldn't do it at the time. However, you live and you learn and I know next time I'm gonna do better. So it was around two weeks or so, he started to experience gas and colic. Now, if you're, if you've ever had a gassy and colicky baby or you're currently dealing with one you know that it's not easy it is hard it's something that I don't wish on any baby at all because no any mother because it is very hard there's literally not much you can do to help them or soothe them I blame myself for that because again I went googling and reading stuff and they were like oh it could be whatever you're eating calling causing him to get gas and colic or whatever and like i changed up my entire eating i stopped eating this started eating that like i kept switching it up switching it up and it was not making his colic or gassiness go away and i was expecting it to go away however come to find out that there was really nothing i could actually do to make it go away because some some babies just has a more sensitive stomach and their digestive their digestive system just needs more time to develop outside of the womb and there's nothing you can do do about it except for weight and 
you know, give them as much comfort and soothe them as much as you can until they grow out of it. And I didn't know that. So I was blaming myself. I was trying to switch up what I was eating, try to stay away from this or that, everything that I was reading on the internet and nothing was making it go away. So there was nice I was up because he's uncomfortable and he's crying and he's in pain and like I'm crying with him because I felt like I was failing him as a mom. Like I should be able to make this stop and I can't. <laughs> so when I finally learned that, you know, I he just has to grow out of it, I, you know, started to be less hard on myself and um, two people recommended this type of bright water because I tried like two other bright waters previously and it was not working. So this bright water called Colic Calm was literally the only thing that soothed him enough where he was like, okay. Of course, it's not something that's gonna cure it, but it soothed him where he was comfortable and he wasn't fussy for long periods of time. So, um, and it was expensive. It's like a four ounce bottle for like $22. However, I bought it and I bought it and I bought it for as long as I needed it because it was, at that point, it was anything to help him. And thankfully it was natural with no like preservative and artificial coloring and chemicals or anything. So that was a plus. There was times that I literally felt like I was failing as a mother. I was scared to say that out loud because I'm supposed to get it right. You know what I mean? You hungry? I can't. It wasn't until I threw out all of the advice that I was getting, all of the advice that I was researching out the window that I began to feel better. So the whole get him on a schedule, I threw that out the window. The whole don't co-sleep with him, I threw that out the window. I threw out every single thing. And shout out to my friend Lisa, cause she told me something that really stuck, stuck with me. You not hungry? She told me something that really stuck with me because one day we were texting and I was explaining to her the hard time I was having and how I was feeling. And she told me, listen, Babies don't get spoiled. <laughs> Milk does. I would never forget that. And she was just like, at the end of the day, you know what's best for your son. There's nobody else that can do a better job than you for him. And she told me, she gave me an example that when her son was a baby, she didn't let him cry it out. She didn't, um, she didn't do a lot of things that, you know, traditional normal people or other parents or other mothers would do. She picked them up every time he cried. Um, she was always there with him, you know, and he grew into this very strong and independent young man or young boy because I think he's, he's not even a teenager yet. So I took that and I would say that's the best piece of advice that anybody had given me because it was only then that I felt I started to feel better about myself so I did whatever I had to do to comfort my child I did whatever I had to do to make him feel good and help him sleep through the night and help me sleep through the night and that is exactly what I needed no schedule no routine I co-sleep with him because Going, when he was experiencing all of the colic and gassiness, he only wanted to sleep on my chest. That's the only time he would get a good night's sleep and the only time I would get a good night's sleep. And it turns out that the reason for that is because when he slept on my chest, I was always propped up on the bed. So I wasn't laying down flat, I was propped up on the bed and that actually helps with the gassiness. So now he's slanted like this and he's on, laying on my chest and that soothed him plus skin to skin also helps baby relax and 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 comfort them so i slept with him on my chest at night so both of us could get a good night's sleep can only talk talk for myself whenever he cried it was for a reason he wasn't just crying to cry 
So, and even now that he's six months, I'm still not going to let him cry it out because I know he's crying for a reason. It's only when I started to do that that I became more confident as a mother and felt more at ease because I'm comforting my son and I'm giving him the attention that he needs. And really and truly that's all I can do as a mother. The reason why I'm sharing this is because it's already hard being a mother, being a new mother. And if we continue to listen to all of the outside noise instead of listening to our own instinct, we're not helping ourselves. We're not taking care of ourselves and we're not helping our baby by not taking care of ourselves. Um, I feel so much better <laughs> now, of course, versus back then, well, six months ago or four months ago, whatever. The next time around, I know better. When you know better, you do better, right? So if I just let my son be and stop trying to make these certain things happen, we are both better off. Because honestly, my son has grown out of the whole colic phase, gassy colic phase, so happy. The whole routine thing, I was so adamant about getting him on a routine and I threw it out the window. And honestly, when we went to St. Croix, he put himself on a routine. Every night, he went to sleep around 6.30 or 8, slept through the night and woke up every morning between 6.30 and 8. I didn't do that, he did. I, I had nothing, like I didn't make him do that. When he got sleepy, I put him to bed. I gave him a bath at night, put him to bed. He wakes up around the same time every morning. Now, he sleeps through the night and he, he goes to bed when he's tired. It may work for some to try and force a routine. I don't want to use the word force because that's kind of have a negative connotation to it, but it may work for some to develop a routine from the time they're born, but it didn't work for me. And now that I'm wiser, I know not to feel lesser than if I cannot do what others are doing, no matter how great or no matter how great or easy it may seem because my child is different than yours and vice versa. So I am going to cut this video off now because he's a little fussy. He's probably hungry, but he's not gonna nurse with all of this going on around him because he thinks he's missing out on something. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and um, hopefully it helps somebody again this is not me giving you advice on how to be a new mom or tips and tricks for your newborn it's not that i'm just saying that at the end of the day you have to do what is best for you and another important thing is you have to take care of yourself if you're not taking care of yourself and you're not refueling you're just giving 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 and draining yourself if you're not refueling how can you fully take care of anybody else so that's another thing i learned that sometimes i just need a minute um i used to feel guilty about like not being by my son's side and i think that has something to do with my own insecurities and my childhood like i was always very sad or upset when my parents left me with somebody else whether it was for a few hours or not i remember times of waking up at a friend's house and my parents are gone like i used to cry and stuff so now i hate leaving him with anybody that he's not a hundred percent comfortable with or um close to so really and truly the only person i leave him with right now is his father he's very um familiar with familiar with his grandmother my mother so i'll leave him with her but other than that, I don't leave him with anybody and it's not, it's more because of me and not them, if that makes sense. <laughs> you see yourself? So, um, yeah, take care of yourself. Uh, every now and then, I just need a break. <laughs> Every now and then, I need a sanity run. And my sanity run is just me going somewhere or being by myself for a specific amount of time without him, without his father, just me by myself. And it's okay. Like, 
it helps me be better for him. So it's a learning process. I'm learning as I go. And as hard as my pregnancy was, and as hard, and as hard as the first three months were, like I love being a mom. Like there, is, I don't think there's anything more that I love. <laughs> like I really do love being a mom. I know for sure I want more children. So you know, you it wasn't it can't be that bad, right? <laughs> if I know I want more, and you know I have to love it that much to want more. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little chit chat and. If you do, give it a thumbs up and I'll know that I could make more videos like this. If I, um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Say subscribe to my mommy's channel. You're not even looking. Look up. Josiah. Josiah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Say subscribe to my mommy channel. Say subscribe to my mommy channel. <laughs> He's so handsome. Yeah. Ah. Anyways, peace. And you deserve it all. This is perfect. And it's the magic and everything you do. Is an not nerd? Perfect, it's ended. The sound is missing. And everything.